Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnanki and today we will be discussing about the anatomy of medulla oblongata. The medulla is the third part of the brainstem and as we have already covered, the brainstem is composed of the midbrain, pons and the medulla and the medulla is broad above where it joins with the pons and narrow down below and becomes continuous with the spinal cord. The length is 3 cm while the width and its upper end it is 2 cm. And there is a deep groove which demarcates the medulla from the bulging ventral part of the pons. So the medulla is divided into two parts. There is a lower close part which surrounds the central canal which transmits the CSF to the spinal cord. Then we have the upper, op upper open part that is related to the lower part of the fourth ventricle. And the medulla is marked by a series of fissures or sulci that divide it into a number of regions. So let's have a look into the same. So here I will be just demonstrating how you can draw the medulla in an easy way. So first I am representing the pons here. So the pons can be drawn like this. And above the pons we have the midbrain. So I am just drawing the cross cerebri here and below the pons I am drawing the medulla here. So starting with the central deep fissure that is the andromedian fissure and immediately lateral to that there is an elevation called as the pyramids. So this one represents the pyramids that is the elevation immediately lateral to the andromedian fissure. Then lateral to the elevation here, I am just drawing the second elevation, a rounded elevation that is nothing but the ole. And this constitutes the ventral aspect of the medulla. And along with that, you will be able to find a few fibers which are crisscrossing here in the pyramids and that is termed as the pyramidal decussation. The fibers are crossing to each other side. And over here, the sulcus which separates the pyramids from the olive, that is termed as the androlateral sulci. So let's have a look into the same. So these are the basic features that you should draw. We have the olive here, we have the pyramids here, then we have the andromedian fissure here, androlateral sulci here. So these are the things that you should remember. So the ventral aspect of the anterior aspect of the medulla is consisting of the anterior median fissure or andromedian fissure which is the continuation of the corresponding feature present on the spinal cord. While there is another point that is a foramen cecum where the andromedian fissure meets the pontomedullary junction, there exists a small depression and that is termed as a foramen cecum. Then we have the pyramid which is the elevation immediately lateral to the andromedian fissure. Then the androlateral sulci which is the continuation of the corresponding sulci of the spinal cord. And from this sulci is the origin of the hypoglossal nerve which is a cranial nerve. Then lateral to the sulcus there is an elevation rounded elevation that is the olive and the olive is composed of the glossopharyngeal, vagus, cranial part of axillary nerves and all these nuclei are situated below that and that's why there is an elevation and from there it arises so we can see the structure here more clearly we have the pons here and the andromedian fissure here here we have the foramen cecum then we have the olive here, we have the pyramids, the androlateral sulci. So these are the structures you should keep in mind when you are studying the medulla. So I am just drawing the nerve roots here which are arising from. So the first one that is the hypoglossal nerve that is arising from the sulci lateral to that of the andromedian fissure that is the androlateral sulci. So the rootlets are arising from the androlateral sulci which gives origin to the hypoglossal nerve. 
and there is another sulci or the groove present lateral to that of the olive. So from here, from this groove is the origin of the glossopharyngeal nerve and from here we have the vagus nerve origin and below that we have the cranial part of the spinal axillary nerve. So these are the rootlets, nerve roots arising from the medulla, the ventral aspect of the medulla. So that you have to keep in mind this particular image, it should be there in your mind. Then the dorsal or posterior aspect of the medulla. So there exists the posterior median sulcus, which is the upward continuation of the corresponding features in the spinal cord. Then we have the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus and there are two elevations which contain tracts that enter from the posterior funiculus of the spinal cord. So the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, these terms are already taken for you under the spinal cord. So that defines the same. Then we have two new structures that is the gracile and cuneate tubercles which is above the fasciculi where it ends there are these rounded elevations and uh, that is termed as the gracile and cuneate tubercles. Then we have the posterolateral sulcus, lateral to the posterior median sulcus and uh, that is the other part from where the dorsal rootlets of cervical nerves arises from the sulcus. Then we have the tuberculum sinearum which is immediately lateral to the posterolateral sulcus. A longitudinal elevation is present over there and that is termed as the tuberculum sinearum. So I'll just draw you the same structure here. So I'm drawing the dorsal aspect of the medulla. So we have an upper open part. Then we have the extension downwards. It's a rough diagram. And we have the posteromedian sulcus here. And immediately lateral to it, this one, there is a rounded elevation here and that elevation is termed as the gracile tubercle and this remaining part is termed as, the elevation is termed as the fasciculus gracilis and immediately lateral to that we have the cuneate tubercle and the fasciculus cuneatus. So these are the basic features that you will see here and there is another structure called as the stria medullaris here which marks the upper part, upper end of the medulla. So this is stria medullaris. So these are the basic structures you should know regarding the dorsal aspect of the medulla. So the posterior aspect of the medulla, the same thing with the model I have explained here, where you can see the posteromedian sulcus. Then we have two rounded elevations here. The first one is gracile tubercle and the cuneate tubercle. Then we have fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus. And lateral to that longitudinal elevation which is present is termed as the tuberculum sinearum. And the sulcus over here is termed as the posterolateral sulcus. So these are the structures that you should remember. And here we have the stria medullaris, which defines the upper boundary of the medulla. So the upper open part of medulla, it forms the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle and it is bounded on either sides by the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Then we have the posteromedian sulcus which is present in the upper open part and immediately lateral to that there is posterior medial eminence lateral to the posteromedian sulcus which is formed by the hypoglossal and vagus nerves. Then we have the vestibular area that is area lateral to the sulcus limitans and the stria medullaris which forms the superior limit of the medulla oblongata. So here we have all those structures present once again. We have the stria medullaris, sulcus limitans, then we have the posteromedian sulcus, 
the gracile tubercle, cuneate tubercle, tuberculum sinearum. Then inside on the upper open part you can see the vestibular area. This area is termed as the vestibular area. So these are the structures that you should remember. Then we can move to the internal features of medulla. The internal features of medulla is studied at three levels that is at the level of the olivary nucleus, at the level of sensory decussation and at the level of pyramidal decussation. So the first one at the level of olivary nucleus, these are the structures which are present over there. The inferior cerebellar peduncle, the hypoglossal nucleus, the dorsal vagus nucleus, vestibular nucleus, solitary tract nucleus, the nucleus ambiguous and the dorsal and ventral cochlear nuclei. So these are the structures which will be present at the level of olivary nucleus and the ascending tracts and descending tracts are as follows. The ascending tracts which are present at the level of the olive are the medial lemniscus, anterior spinothalamic tract, the lateral spinothalamic tract, the anterior spinocerebellar tract, then the spinotectal tract. And the descending tracts include the corticospinal tracts, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the tectospinal tract, vestibulospinal tract, and the rubrospinal tract. So you have already covered these portions in the other classes. So these are the tracts which will be passing at the level of the olive. So here we have a section explaining the same with all the necessary points. So here we have the hypoglossal nucleus and lateral to that the dorsal vagus nucleus. Then we have the solitary tract nucleus, the nucleus ambiguous here. Then we have the dorsal axillary olivary nucleus. Then we have the arcuate nucleus here. The pyramids are present here. Then we have the inferior olivary nucleus. Then lateral spinothalamic and spinotectal tracts here. The spinocerebellar tracts here. Then we have the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve here and the tract is also there. Then we have the inferior cerebellar peduncle here. So these are the bilateral structures which will be present on the section taken at the level of the olive. So you should have a knowledge about the diagram and you should be able to mark most of these points. And the second section is at the level of the sensory decussation where we have the medial lemniscus, accessory cuneate nucleus, the fasciculus cuneatus, inferior cerebellar peduncle, the hypoglossal and dorsal vagal nuclei, the nucleus of solitary tract and the nucleus ambiguous. So there will be some continuation and uh, these are the structures which are present at the level of the sensory decussation. And the ascending and descending tracts are as follows. The anterior spinothalamic, the lateral spinothalamic, anterior spinocerebellar, the posterior spinocerebellar, spinoolivary, spinotectal. So these are the ascending tracts. While the corticospinal, medial longitudinal fasciculus, then tectospinal, vestibulospinal, olivospinal, and rubrospinal will form the descending tracts. And the section at the level of the sensory decussation will be including these structures here. So the same one we have mentioned before, that is a hypoglossal nucleus. Then the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus here. Then the nucleus of spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. Nucleus ambiguous, rubrospinal, olivospinal tract, the tectospinal tract here. Then we have the pyramids. And here accordingly we have the fasciculus gracilis and uh, nucleus gracilis, the nucleus cuneatus and fasciculus cuneatus. So these are the structures that you should be remembering from the section at the level of the sensory decussation. So the last one, at the level of the pyramidal decussation, there will be a central gray matter, ventral gray column separated by the decussating pyramidal fibers, the reticular formation and the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. 
and the ascending fibers include the anterior spinothalamic, lateral spinothalamic, anterior spinocerebellar, the posterior spinocerebellar, spino olivary and the spinotectal tracts. While the descending tracts include the corticospinal tract, medial longitudinal fasciculus, tectospinal, vestibulospinal, olivospinal and rubrospinal. So these are the structures passing through the, the last section at the level of the pyramidal decussation. So here we have the representation of the same with the handmade model. So you can see here the fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus, then we have the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. Then we have the spinal root of axillary nerve which is passing out from the ventral gray column. And here we have the central gray matter. This is the representation of the decussation, the pyramidal decussation. We have the pyramids here. Then we have the ventral spinocerebellar tract, lateral spinothalamic and spinotectal tract, anterior spinothalamic tract, and the spino olivary tract. So these are the major things that you should remember. The clinical anatomy of the medulla includes a lesion or injury to the medulla oblongata is usually fatal because it controls most of the vital centers. So the vital centers which controls the heart rate, the respiration process and all are located particularly at the medulla region. So any injury to that particular region will arrest these vital functions and thereby causing the fatality. And there is another condition that is called the bulbar palsy where the 9, 10, 11 and 12th cranial nerves are affected directly and that is termed as the bulbar palsy and their respective functions will be affected. So let's have a brief description over what we have studied about medulla. We have seen the dorsal aspect of medulla that is there is an open part then we have below the open part we have the posteromedian sulcus then we have the gracile tubercle and the fasciculus gracilis then fasciculus cuneatus and cuneate tubercle here this is the posterolateral sulcus this is the posterolateral sulcus here and we have the striae medullaris which marks the upper end portion of the medulla. Then we have the vestibular area which is located here. That is a vestibular area here. So these are the basic things you should remember. And here we will be having the middle cerebellar peduncle. So these are the structures you should see in the dorsal aspect while on the ventral aspect we have the pons and immediately below the pons you have the andromedian fissure and lateral to that we have the pyramids and lateral to the pyramids we have the rounded elevation that is the olive. So these are the structures. Here we have the foramen cecum and there is pondomedullary junction. There is a groove which demarcates the pons from that of the medulla. So these are the structures that you should remember. And I have told you about the nerve rootlets arising from the ventral aspect of the medulla. From the posteroandrolateral sulci, this is the androlateral sulci from here arises the hypoglossal nerve and from the groove that is lateral to the olive will form the glossopharyngeal nerve here then rootlets of the vagus nerve from here and we have the cranial part of the spinal accessory nerve here so these are the rootlets so you should be knowing how to draw it very simply. So only I have added this particular drawing in this. So these are the features that you should note down in case of the external features of the medulla. The internal features you can refer to the previous diagrams and you can draw the same.
Thank you.